Imagine two people, both visit a psychiatrist, both are diagnosed with depression. Both are prescribed the same medication, but their experiences couldn't be more different. Person A feels like they're moving through quicksands, slowed thoughts, heavy body, barely able to get out of bed. Person B feels wired, their minds racing, they're overwhelmed, can't sleep, yet utterly exhausted. Same label, same treatment, whether it works, trial and error, luck even. And that's a problem. Here's the shocking truth. We diagnose mental illness today the same way doctors diagnosed disease 200 years ago. Not by looking inside the body, not by using biological tests, but simply by asking patients to describe their symptoms. And that's where things start to fall apart. Because what if schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and schizoaffective disorder aren't actually separate illnesses at all? What if these labels don't reflect the underlying biology of the brain? In 2015, Dr. Clements and his team at the Bipolar Schizophrenia Network on Intermediate Phenotypes tested this idea in one of their largest ever studies on psychosis biotypes involving 711 patients with psychosis, 883 first degree relatives who explore genetic patterns, 278 healthy controls, a total of 1,872 participants. But instead of just relying on symptoms, they did something different. They measured what was actually happening in the brain. The researchers used biomarkers, objective biological measures that reflect brain function. They ran standardized tests across all participants, measuring brain activity using EEG scans to examine how different regions of the brain communicate, cognitive function using memory, attention, and problem-solving tests to assess how well the brain processes information, sensory processing using eye tracking and reflex responses, as sensory overload or sluggish responses can reveal deeper brain dysfunctions. Then, instead of forcing patients into DSM categories, they fed this data into machine learning models and let the brain itself decide how these patients should be grouped. And that's when everything changed. The traditional DSM labels, they didn't hold up. Instead of schizophrenia, bipolar disorder and schizoaffective disorder, the data revealed three completely different brain-based subtypes or biotypes that had nothing to do with their official diagnosis. Let's break them down. Think of biotype one as the shutdown brain. It includes severe cognitive impairment, weak brain function, and slow processing speeds. It has low activity in the frontal and parietal regions, the areas responsible for decision-making, memory, and problem solving, and was the most common in patients diagnosed with schizophrenia. Biotype 2 is considered as the overloaded brain, which had the opposite problem as biotype 1, too much brain activity. Sensory systems were hypersensitive, causing overstimulation, difficulty filtering out information, and increased impulsivity. This group included patients from all three DSM categories. And lastly, biotype 3, which are called the almost neurotypical brain, which had minimal cognitive impairment but still experiencing hallucinations and delusions, proving that psychosis isn't just about cognitive deficits, it's also about perception and sensory processing. And this one is mostly seen in bipolar disorders, but still contains schizophrenia cases. If DSM diagnoses were accurate, patients with the same disorder should have similar brain patterns. But when researchers plotted the data, they found significant overlap. Schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and schizoaffective disorder were scattered across all three biotypes. Biotype 1 leaned towards schizophrenia but included bipolar cases. Biotype 2 was an even mix of all three diagnoses, showing that DSM categories don't reflect real brain patterns. Biotype 3 had more bipolar cases, yet some schizophrenia patients fell into this group. The biotypes explain 38% more variance in brain function abnormality compared to DSM categories. Even within each biotype, the data was 29% more tightly clustered, proving these groups were based on real, measurable brain function, not just symptoms. And yet, we still treat them all the same, but it gets even more interesting. When the researchers included 883 first-degree relatives, they found that some of these brain patterns showed up in family members too even in those without a clinical diagnosis. What does that mean? It means that psychosis biotypes might reflect inherited brain traits, not just illness. Relatives of biotype one patients showed similar cognitive impairments, even if they had never developed psychosis. 
Relatives of biotype 2 patients showed heightened sensory reactivity, just like their proband counterparts. Biotype 3 relatives had fewer impairments, suggesting a different genetic contribution. This suggests that some families carry neurobiological risk factors that don't always translate into full-blown illness, proving that mental illness isn't just about symptoms, it's in your biology. If psychosis can be broken down into biotypes, why not depression, anxiety, or ADHD? Researchers are already finding subtypes. Depression isn't just about low serotonin. It can stem from inflammation, dopamine issues, or cognitive dysfunction. Anxiety isn't just one size fits all. Some people have an overactive fear response, while others struggle with impulse control. ADHD isn't just about attention. Some cases are dopamine driven, others are related to executive function deficits. But right now, psychiatrists have to guess. What if, instead of guessing, they could see it? Think about someone you know, a friend, a sibling, a parent who struggled with mental health. Maybe they've tried medication after medication. Maybe they've been told they're treatment resistant. Maybe that person is you. But what if the issue isn't resistance? What if we've been treating the wrong thing all along? Imagine a world where mental illness is diagnosed with like heart disease or cancer using brain scans, genetic markers, or measurable data. An EEG could show what kind of depression you have. A blood test could reveal whether your anxiety is driven by inflammation or neurotransmitters. A brain imaging report could match you to the right treatment the first time. We already do this for physical health. Cancer has subtypes. Diabetes has type 1 and 2. So why are we still guessing when it comes to the brain? Biotypes could be the key to finally understanding mental illness, not as vague labels, but as real measurable brain conditions. That future, it's coming, and it could change everything.